you are old, my husband is old. Sure. Whether I say it or not, I hear you. if he wants to cheat, he will cheat. Yeah. That's just my take out out of this. Yeah. And I've been saying, whether I come here on your podcast and I say it with my mouth that, oh, my husband, what, 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 uh, if, if he cheats, I will not leave. Whether I say it or I don't say it, wherever he is, if he wants to cheat, he will cheat. Mm-hmm. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits. It's funny how we met. It's so funny how we met. Right? <laughs> yes. It was, it was, it, it, so it was an event. Yeah. Um, a fellow content creator's mm-hmm. event. Uh, her name is Lelo N. And she was doing, I think it was a first annual black carpet, if that's yeah. what it was called. You were also a speaker there. Yeah, she was launching her podcast as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's where we met. And when I saw you, I was like, oh. At first, I didn't really see you. Uh, I didn't see you because you were looking there and I was looking at things sure. and them that side. Yeah. And then when I sat down, that's when I was looking your direction. I was like, oh, that's that guy, engineer, your, your yeah, life yeah, guy. And yeah, I was like, okay, yeah. cool. And yeah. And it was quite interesting because I'm not a person who does these sort of things and, and go out. Yeah. Um, I think that's why I've sort of created this whole concept of just being in studio and being mm-hmm. on camera and having conversations. Yeah. Because it's easier than having to ubona and socialize all the time. 100%. But lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. Uh, officially on camera. 100%. Why Thank do you, you believe in black marriage so much? Uh, firstly, because I'm coming from a black marriage yeah. and I think I came out okay. My mom and my dad have been married for uh, since 86. I think it's 38 years now or so. And I came out okay. And I think that's just my foundation of marriage. I came out okay. My parents' marriage and family was good, mm-hmm. you know. And I want that for children, for my yeah. children. I want that for people. Most especially if you have children, you know. I believe in nuclear family. So, yeah. That's why I believe in black marriages. And now it's out of fashion, hey? People are divorcing like they are just, I don't know. But but promise, mm-hmm. um, I, 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 as an engineer for me, I work with numbers a lot, right? Yeah. And I look at stats to inform my decisions mm. because stats actually give you a good idea of how things are happening and what is the patterns in society. 100%. The patterns are that two-thirds, 67% mm. of South African marriages mm-hmm. end in the first five years, right? Yeah. Two thirds. Mm. So stats are telling you, oh, Lenda and I will probably not make it past year five. Yeah, yeah. Why are you so into trying to be the one who's, I'm different. We will make yeah, it. Yeah. Funny enough, I'm just jumping year five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, at least I'm, I'm over the year five. You know, yeah, maybe yeah, I'm yeah. one of those that will make it. Yeah. But the stats are not lying. Mm-hmm. And it's hard. It's hard. And For me, I don't even blame people that divorce because marriage is hard work. You know, marriage is hard work. It needs, I think it needs somebody that, you see the way I'm telling myself about my marriage. Mm -hmm. It's because I want it to work and I understand and I'm not just oblivious of the things that are happening, what could potentially happen, but I want to put in the work. 
It's because I know that it's hard. And I think people go inside marriages thinking that, oh, I love you, I love you. Because when you start, obviously, it's, it's, it's just about I love you. I love your curves. I love, you know. Inside marriage, I start having kids. I start not having shape, Punchy, you know. Uh, we get my oh, husband. Oh, you might not be able to have kids. That's a conversation that's people don't have. A, that's a whole conversation. Yeah. yeah. You cannot have kids. Yeah. And kids are a big thing to your husband, sure. even to yourself. Sure. But nature and God, you know, is not whatever. However, that people that don't have kids go through, you know, it's so unfortunate. So those things are hard, you know. And me coming from my background, my husband coming from his background, I found him when he was like old already. We are, we have like roots. We've got things that are governing us. Now, when we come together, we have to form one thing of which in the five. In the first five years, I shame. my mother did it like this. That one, hey, at home they did it like this and all those things. And to me, it's 25. I got married when I was 25. Mm -hmm. I've been contemplating divorce in my marriage. Sure. Do you understand? I've contemplated divorce many times because it's hard. But it's worth it. So For me, it's worth it. So you can't base the, the premise and the rules around your marriage on how you grew up. No, You're no. saying you have to completely unlearn and that's what informing like 67 percent of people to divorce in the first five years because in these five years they're struggling to unlearn yeah yeah you struggle to adjust yeah. it's hard yeah and i remember when i got married my dad one of the things that my dad told me was that i am not your husband i am not your husband firstly let's practicalize with my daughter your husband is a businessman i am an educator mm -hmm. i'm an academic yeah you know I go to work at 7, I come back at 2. Yeah. Your husband can be sleeping until 2 and then wake up at 2, come back at 2 a.m., yeah. have a meeting at 12 and all those things. Yeah. He can be out of the country. My, my dad, I've never slept and my dad is not there. Sure. 25 years of sure. my life. But my kids can go to bed, their dad is not there. So all those things that I've learned for 25 years and then now year one, I'm trying to be a different person. No, I'll always be the promise my bouche because now I'm a Makunya, and I always yeah. fall back from default setting of my own parents, yes, of my dad. Yes, yes. I've seen my mom do this, my dad doing this. And my on my husband's side, um, his parents are not married, so he's not coming from like a family, a nuclear family a nuclear situation. Family, yeah. So I think, I'm not saying people divorce because of that, but that is a big part of adjusting. It's a big part of... The marriage, you know, it's just that. I think I believe, I truly believe that. So you're saying that, for example, your dad is an educator. Yeah. Your, 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 your husband is a businessman. Yes. It was pivotal for your dad to explain to you that mm -hmm. don't look at your husband as you look at me. Yeah. We are different people. We have different dynamics. And it's important that people, when they get into marriages, they define their own marriage yes. themselves. Mm. Um, too many people... Uh, look for a template in other people mm. to mm. form their mm. own marriage. And you're saying that doesn't work. It does not work. It does not work. Not just my, my dad being an educator and my husband a businessman. My dad is a total different person mm. to my husband. You know, my dad, and my dad always say experience. You know, you have, I had you when I was, I don't know how old, but maybe way past uh, his 30s or maybe in his 40s because we're seven and I'm the fourth one. Yeah. My dad is like 67 or so. So he had me when he was old already. So he had accumulated experience. When I knew my dad, he was an old man, you know. He was like older than my kids meeting their dad. Do you understand? So it's very important. And I think I held on that because it was coming from my dad that he told me that the very same template that I'm looking at said, don't look at me. Yeah. You know, and that's, I think that was just an aha, okay. I'm not going to do it like that. Even though it's hard, I still fall back to the default setting. But I always remind myself that my dad said, you are going to build your own marriage. You're going to build your own family. The kids that you're going to have are not the kids that I had. You are not your daughter, you know. So you will have to create your own dynamics in your family according to your personalities, what you guys believe, your yeah. values and all that. I built my family for so long based on me and my wife's values. So do not take that as a template of your marriage. Sure. Take, he always say, take what you can. Yeah, yeah. Take what you can. That, and leave okay, other things My out. mother could do this, my yeah. dad could do this. And leave other things. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, I, look, I, I, I look at how you have been vocal mm. about your marriage. You've been vulnerable to share with many people on your platform 
what your marriage has. Yeah. S- sometimes even intricacies of your marriage, but I do believe you protect a lot. 100%. Um, I've seen yeah. that, that you actually protect a lot, yeah. but you're also much more vulnerable than the normal person. Yes. Um, because people are scared to be vulnerable about mm. such situations and 100%. what happens in, in marriages in general. Um, you were you, you just said to me that you got married at the age of 25, mm. right? Uh, which for some people could seem like quite an early age. Once yeah. again, in this modern day era, people leave marriage to a much later age. Mm-hmm. Um, but you are also open to us that you had been with your husband at the time he was your boyfriend. You broke up. Yeah. Um, he went back to somebody else. And then you got back together again to get married again. Can you just take me through the dynamic of being able... Uguti, there's no such thing as a soulmate and a love of your life. Sometimes there are hiccups and you yeah. meet your husband after hiccups yeah. and you guys become married after going through hurdles. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So um, I met my husband in 2015, 2014, 2015, and then we dated for two years. We broke up. So when I met him, he had a child, okay. right? When I met him, he had a child. The child was two then. And then we dated for two years. We broke up. When we broke up, he uh, dated a girl, right? Okay, let me track back. So I met my husband in 2014. He had a child already who was like two, one, two, two. And when we're dating, he he met this girl sure. when we were dating. After meeting the, this girl, they tried to date and then they broke up. And then years late, like maybe a year later, that's when we broke up. Not because of the girl though. We broke up. When we broke up, he went back to the girl and they had a child, right? And then when I... So when we broke up, I was, we were supposed to get married. It was when we were preparing Lobola stuff mm-hmm. and what, 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 what. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to have this. I'm breaking up. And it was not because of this girl. It was not because of uh, the situation that everyone is talking about. No, we broke up because of our own reasons. Yeah. We broke up. And then a year later, we got back together. And when we got back together, that's when the lady had a child and then we got married because we were supposed to get married in 2016. We broke up. And then when I came back, we just dated and, and got married. Yeah. I think you, I, 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 without being specific, because yeah. it, it's, it's a private issue as mm. to what the challenges were. Yeah. But I want you to speak to the fact that it doesn't always have to be infidelity that can make you say, I don't want to marry this person anymore. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There, there are other dynamics that can make you say, actually, I don't want you to be my husband. Yeah. Actually, one of the reasons, maybe I, I, it's, it's not like private, it's just that I never spoke about it. One of the reasons why I broke up with him then yeah. was that, so remember I told you that he had a two-year-old. Yeah. So now he had issues with the baby mama. Sure. And my husband is coming from a point where he, he, he's not coming from like a fatherly love and stuff. Mm-hmm. So one thing that he does perfectly is one to father. parent, yes, you understand? Yes. So now he had issues with the baby mama, and then th- I think the only option he had was that they should be together okay, for him to okay. be able to see be his a good child. Father. So now I found out that it's like now he's going behind my back, and because now I shouldn't be in the picture because the, they're a family. So I felt like, you know what? You're third wheeling. Uh, that's the exact word that I said. I was yes. like, you know what? I'm a third wheel. Yeah. Let this guy go and, and, and try again, yes. you know, for the sake of his child. That's one of the re- main, actually main reasons. Let me mm-hmm. just say that's the reason why I left. Mm-hmm. And that's where now I went out of the relationship. Did they get anywhere with the relationship? Why do you take him back after he leaves her again? Yeah. Why? Sorry? Why do you take him back after he leaves her again? What, what do you believe has changed in, how, in his character yeah. um, that won't make him want to go back to his original baby mama? Because for me, I did not... They did not even date when I left. That's another thing. Sure. So what, what, why I left was that it's like I felt like I am the, I am the wall that is making him... Interrupting yes, them. Yes, no, they were not... St- Maybe dating. 100%. So yeah. they were not dating. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. They were not dating. It's just, you know, when people talking uh, uh, that, oh, our child, what, 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 you know, as if you, if you were not there, I was going to be with my sure. family, you sure. know. So it was not, I was, I was going to be with my child and his mother, you know, and her mother. So it was not that they were dating and then they left. And then when I came back, they had left her hair or anything like that. No, they were not dating. But I just felt like it was just too much pressure for me. And I had just graduated. I was looking forward to working. I was like, you see this baby situations. 
it's not my portion. I need to focus on my career. I need to focus on getting a job. And I can't. I'm still young anyway, so I can't. That's how I just left it. So they ne they did not even date. Yeah, That's what I'm yeah, saying. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, okay, I, I just want to get back to the fact that what in his character change and his behavior mm -hmm. that made you say, okay, let's try again. Let's let's try now getting married like we wanted to before. Yeah. So for me, it, I, I believe that me meeting my husband and us getting married, it was supposed to be. Okay. So other things that happened, there were just hiccups, you okay. know, okay. that overpowered everything else. Sure. So when we broke up, I knew for a fact that when we got back together, that this is my man. Okay. This is my man. You. Do you understand? You. So, yes, the baby mama overshadowed everything. Yes, everything else overshadowed everything. But for me, it's it's just matters of life. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. decisions that you have to make over and above everything else that is happening. Sure. You have to see through over and above that, okay, this is just clouds and then I'm going there, you know. And it's difficult, but then I'm glad that I saw over and above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how, how is your relationship with being a stepmom? Yeah. Um, is stepmothering difficult for you? Are you finding new challenges every day? Has it been a process for you, or did you just fit in easily into the concept of being a stepmom? So before I got married, um, I was... Uh, I was obviously I met my husband with his first child and then I was helping him take care of the children of the child because the child would come and visit and, and then from there when we got married things just took another sharp curve you know and that's why I don't want to speak about other people's children I don't want to speak about parenting other people's children but the the speaking about the time where everything was harmonious it was then before we got married for you, is step parenting difficult? Let's leave everybody else who's involved. Yeah. Is it for difficult? me, step parenting when you don't have a child is difficult. I hear you. So it's difficult to be a step mom to a person when you don't even know what mothering is through your own self, 100%, biologically. 100%. Yeah. You will never do anything that you'll feel that you're doing a right thing. Sure. Even to the next person, even to the mother itself, it's like, we are Yes. What yes, do you know? Yes. And then when you listen properly, honestly, she was what right. do I know? <laughs> you know, but then I think it's just that, like, when you are a woman, you have those motherly instincts and stuff. Yeah. But it's a total ball game when you have birthed a child. I Now that I've got children, I understand it. That's yeah. why I don't want to talk about other people's yeah. children. It's very personal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you understand the concept, though? I don't know if it's a modern-day thing or even traditional people used to do this. The concept that you as the wife now have the duty to co-parent with the baby mama. Uh, yeah, you know old people... That's why this say of it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. My dad has got kids outside his nuclear family, but then we never had baby. Baby drama, what, what, whoever is saying what, baby ma mama is calling my mom, is coming to my house, is going to my... Nothing like that. Because it takes a village to raise a child. Sure. Everyone, if they want to come, they can go to my aunt, they can go to my... You know, everyone is helping to raise the kids, Absolutely, you know. Yeah. But then now things are very personal, you know, and... Now the child has to come to the dad and the mom. The, now the child cannot go to the grandmother because I want my child to be with the dad, you know. Now that you are a stepmother, they, and that's how now the dynamics are just because we're no longer community raising the kids. Yeah. 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 What was your question again? <laughs> no, no, you've answered it. it did how uh, how uh, stepmothering um, has been difficult okay. for you um, without actually involving the other parties involved. Yeah. You, can, you know what? This thing of... Um, a child belongs to their mother. Yeah. It's real. Okay. You can help to parent, like you, you can help to, to, like you can help step parent when the child is in your house if you're not staying full time with the thing, with, with the child. But then ultimately the child belongs to their mother. You need to respect that. You need to, it's just a trick. Step parenting is a tricky situation. It's a very tricky situation. You've explained this um, a few times yeah. to different people. Mm. Um, but I wanted to understand the holistic element of why to you it is important, or let me not say important, of why to you it's not a dismissible offense. You yeah. spoke about how your husband 
is you feel like it was written in the stars mm -hmm. just paraphrasing what you said earlier mm -hmm. you feel as if when you guys broke up you knew you'd come back together you yeah. knew that this is my person yeah um you guys have built so much together your house is a happy home mm. you guys are in harmony mm. so you understand that fundamentally those are the things that are important but you always say that for you cheating is not something that would make you leave your husband mm. um I want you to explain it fully because perhaps people look at cheating as just um, my husband stepped out and has a Slay Queen side chick and it's mm -hmm. all over the internet. But it, it can be different. People make mm. mistakes in marriages and relationships. Yeah. And within the home, mm. we fix it internally without mm. involving other people. Sometimes maybe involve parents. Yeah. Everybody talks, everybody calms down and we move on. Because mm. what we've put in versus what we're going to lose by ending this is so much more. Yeah. Why do you believe that cheating is not a deal breaker? For me, cheating, honestly, is not a deal breaker. And maybe I need to say, maybe because... And I think maybe I offend people that are married to serial cheaters. I, I think it's you. a different thing. It's a different ball game. I think so. And maybe I need to say that as well, that I think maybe... People are mad because there are people that deal with serial cheaters, yeah. of which I cannot deal with a yeah. serial cheater. Yeah. But I can deal with my husband who once cheated and then I forgave him. Yeah. I so that's you. where I'm coming from with the whole cheating thing. But if you're going to now be a serial cheater and be taking a, a, a slay queens, whatever, and changing our dynamic, which is provision, protection, assurance, you know, you coming home on time and all those things. For me, if the foundation and our values are not shaken, I do not really see why the other stuff should shake me. That's just that. But then, like I said, serial cheaters, it's a whole different ball game. Are you not allowing, though, uh, a, a, a room for the serial cheating to start happening by, by saying that you can forgive that mistake? Yeah. Look, you are old. My husband is old. Sure. Whether I say it or not, I hear you. if he wants to cheat, he will cheat. Yeah. That's just my take out out of this. Yeah. And I've been saying, whether I come here on your podcast and I say it with my mouth that, oh, my husband, what, 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 uh, if, if he cheats, I will not leave. Whether I say it or I don't say it. Wherever he is, if he wants to cheat, he will cheat. Mm -hmm. Like, stop wanting to put what a person could do on you, on what you could potentially say. And then that would limit me not to say what I really want to say in a way that I want to say it. Because I'm afraid, oh, if I say what I truly believe, then he'll go and cheat. Sure, oh, sure, bruh, sure. He'll go and cheat if he wants to cheat. That, that, that means the fundamentals of the marriage weren't there. They weren't true in the first place. They weren't true. Because just you saying it mustn't be a thing that... Invokes that him invokes to him to cheat. Because cheating is such a big thing. You can't be invoked by a person. By words. a person who went to a podcast <laughs> and said, if my husband cheats, I want to... Like, are you, are you kidding me? If you are in marriage, you'll know all these things. Yeah. But people, I've realized that also people that are making noise outside, they're people that are not married. Sure. They're people that are not married. Because if you are inside, you'll understand that there's nothing. You can cook whatever. If your husband wants to do something, you'll yeah, do it. Yeah. You can do monkey styles in bed. You can cook uh, chicken sauce in a what what. If he wants to go, he'll go. So don't stop leaving because you are shielding this thing. And that's another thing. Women, we shield a lot. We're not honest. Um, we don't, we're not honest with our expectations or what we really believe in. Guys, nah, nah I sleep at night ne? because I speak my mind. I speak ne? my heart. Some people haven't made... Some people actually don't know their expectations. Mm -mm. Do you know that? Some people, once again, they go back to thinking how marriage should be. The system has conditioned them that this is what you must accept, this is yeah. what you mustn't accept. Yes. But they're not diagnosing their issues within their marriage and then fixing them. Yes. Because um, somebody once said that until you're married, you won't know who you are. Because every day you discover, yes. how can I just forgive this? How can I just forgive this? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to segue out of the marriage topic a bit. Yeah. Um, I spoke to you about this off air uh, when we were at the at that event. Mm. What is the issue between female content creators? Why ninga funani? Uh, for me personally, I don't think there's a content creator ongam funi, unless if you are vile, unless if I see that this one is gonna pollute me. This one is like 
toxic on another level. But otherwise, I think I get along with all content creators, and that's why I'm able to go to events with them. Yeah. I'm able to collaborate with them. You understand? So, yeah. But I think it's just a woman thing. Women are women. We'll always be women. We'll always be cow. We'll always fight and all that. But as far as I'm concerned, if you're not toxic, I won't hate you. But if I see toxicity, I <laughs> yo. Miss um, me. Uh, maybe you're too strict or you can you can dispute yeah maybe you're too strict or you're the common problem mm -hmm. promise mm -hmm. and you need to self-introspect yeah. because there is uh there's owami there is who's owami queen lee i think from who's, who's, venda olimpopo I think that's what her name is. I'm not too sure. I'm not big on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, the Lerato Khanyako incident. Mm -hmm. So these are all black women who have numbers on their various platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and you're the common factor. They can't all be toxic? Uh, I don't know if I want to speak about this. I'll only speak about the Lerato Khanyako situation. Sure. Because I feel it's worthy for me to speak about. Honest, like with all honesty. Yeah. That's what I'm going to touch. Maybe the other parts will just drizzle into whatever. But I'm sure. going to speak about the Lerato Khanyaro. I was actually still saying that. You say if I meet Lerato Khanyaro, I'm going to apologize. I don't even want to apologize. Kadi on Kadi. DM. DM, uh uh. It's like if I meet her, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to do a video apologizing to her. Do you understand? Why? Because. Um, that was just a silly, silly thing. I was like new on TikTok and I was just, you know, one thing. The I've, cloud clouded you? It, it really clouded me. Mm -hmm. But then also she really went down on me mm -hmm. in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? She really went down on me and said, oh, what, 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 Dubai, wara, wara, you know. Somebody mentioned her name with other celebrities and she was the one that jumped into my perhaps, comment perhaps section. explain what okay. happened for the viewer who's, cool. who's new to the story. Cool. So, can I, what, what was, now let me think. You posted so, something about, go, it was about going to Dubai. Oh, no, no, no. I posted something about, uh, I don't know, it was a trail of conversation, but ultimately I reached a point where someone said, eh, and the third one, Tando, Ayanda Tabeta are millionaires, sure. but then they, they are not breaking or something like that. And I made a video to say, ha, huh, like, we still live in a place where we think celebrities have money. Have and lots have, of money. Has yeah. lots of money. I yeah, mean, yeah. are millionaires. So these people that you mentioned here, are they millionaires mm -hmm, now? Nah. Mm -hmm. That's what Lerato commented on and okay. said, oh, yeah, Gonje, now we can tell Dubai or Motu, oh, yeah, Dubai, and think that people can afford. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's how it started. And then I, I was responding to her. Okay. We're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. However, I, I, I feel that I'm not regretting what I said, but I just want to like apologize to her because she's an, an amazing woman. She's doing amazing things. I can learn from her. You know, she's in the industry that I'm in. And I don't want to fight people that are uh, like here because I want to go there. I want to reach, I want to learn from them. I don't want to fight people that I can learn from. And that's the only person that I want to speak about. And I would apologize when I see her, 100%. Uh, so and the other, the other ones, nothing. You're steadfast that they are toxic and- I, I don't yeah. even see them. Guys, you, you, I don't even see them. That's how much I just want to speak about Lagat Yeah, yeah. She's, she's definitely an incredible woman who, who has done a lot. A lot. Um, but do you not think she was coming from a place of the fact that she's bullied a lot on the internet? Yeah. So she yeah. was also defending herself. 100%. And that's where um, I, I realized that sometimes don't just be like anyone, you know. And I said, even in the comment, when we we're going back and forth, that I know you. This is who you are. You will come in the comment and speak and speak and speak. She's one celebrity that will always. And it's because she's been bullied a lot, you know. I would have understood that and not taken her on and dragged the whole thing. And that's why I would apologize. If she sees this, I'm sorry, mother. I had Titi Mbai here um, some time ago on mm. the same seat. And we were speaking about just his role as a husband mm. and what men go through in instances, in marriages, um, the pains they go through, the struggle of being a man and how much weight they have to yeah. carry yeah. as a black man. Mm. Um, how do you react when your husband cries? I actually become very happy when he cries because he seldom cries. 
he seldom cries and he will just push and push and be working, even though you know that hey, things are not working, you know. But he will put a face, he will put that positive face so that I don't worry. He always says that I cannot just be breaking down all the time because if I break down, I, I become scared. Do you understand? Especially in the first few years of our marriage. Mm. When my husband does not have things together, I panic. I'm like, where am I going to go? What is going to happen? Mm, you know, mm, because mm. like the baobab is breaking down, is like falling apart, sure. you know. But then now when he cries, I actually support him because I know what it takes, you yeah. know. I know what it takes to keep the lights on. I know what it takes to take the kids to school. I know what it takes to want more. Husbands want more for their families, you know. And yeah. So especially ever since COVID, so my husband's business took a knock through COVID. And you would think that it was when COVID was going off that things were going to be better. And people who are in business will tell you that it's actually the aftermath yeah. that wrecked everything. Yeah. You know, you were inside thinking that, I know we're going to go out. When they say, okay, it's over, the aftermath. So. Sure. It's, it, it's just the hardest. So it was then where I was like more more like seeing my husband, you know, because now this big giant is falling apart, you mm, know. Mm, so mm, that's how mm. I'm saying when he cries now, I'm like, is it too much, good. Is it too much pressure for black husbands to have it together? It is because there's no, firstly, there's no template. Your father did not make it. Your father is even nowhere to be found. Your grandfather is just a person, you know. And footy, they want better because they do not have better. But one thing I always tell my husband is that, we are okay. You know, if you want to go there and grind crazy how you want, do not think that your, hus your, your wife wants this mansion or whatever. Yes, I want it, but if you can't put it together now... I'm very content Like, I'm happy. content, I'm okay. If we would go to... Ways, I always say that if we would go to Alexandra, I'll be okay. As, as long as I'm with my children and husband and we'll rebuild from there going mm, forward. Mm, I mm, always mm, tell him that, that, you know what? And I think that's what helped him. He, did, he knew that I'm not a materialistic person at all. At all. That's why when people are talking about materialism, I'm like, mm, I don't know, my dear. I just have these things my husband got me. Otherwise, now I'm just a village girl from Limpopo. It's funny know? how not many women can stay after a man no longer has money. Yeah. Even wives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if the, the tap is opening smaller, even like it's not like it's not there, but then the tap is no longer pouring like it was pouring. Yeah. Do you understand? And at that point, it's, who that man is that will sure. keep you with him. Sure. It's who that sure. man is. At your core, you know that I, my husband is a, is, is a giant. In daughter, man. In daughter, man. He will fight. He will sell his liver at the end. If things push to shove, just for us to be okay, I know that. I know he's going to pick himself up again. That's what keeps... And it's very easy for you to leave marriage when I care when you, when you met this guy. Not because, it's not always because you are a materialistic person or you were with this person for money. But you don't know anything else but this person who could send you airtime, who could buy you a car, who could send you... I was being sent cars at work, you know, delivered cars at work, you know. The life I was Need driving, that. like... <laughs> So now the tap is smaller. What is keeping me? You know, yeah. it should be the, 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 the core of that man. Yeah. I know that there is a giant lying in there and it will always wake up. Would you say right now you guys are in a rebuilding phase? 100%. Yeah. It's the aftermath of COVID, guys. I don't know if, if there's anyone who knows about the aftermath of COVID. Please comment there. <laughs> we are like <laughs> rebuilding, like rebuilding, rebuilding. But I'm so glad that... Um, we are rebuilding and we are together and mm, we are happy. Mm, 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 mm. Because sometimes, Lungile, you know, in marriage, especially men, black men, sometimes the money, they, it drives them. Mm -hmm. It drives them. They think, oh, hey, we are this, we are that, we can have all the girls in the world and, and, and. And once the tab closes the bed, they start to see, actually, actually, you know. So... Yeah, that's where we are. We're rebuilding. And I'm so glad that we're rebuilding together. I'm so glad that we are real realizing a lot of things, you know. And yeah, that's where we when are. When the money was there, though, did you ever feel like you were losing him to the world? Oh, my dear. You will, I will be in my E-Class Mac Spec Limited Edition <laughs> asking where the man is. Do you understand? 
I would rather be in my Uber chilling knowing that my husband is cooking at home. Do you understand? So it's that I always tell my friend that, you know, my friend, God works in a mysterious way. You will think that it's COVID hunting. It's just God rearranging things. We would say, sure. where, now you are a husband. You forgot yeah, that you are a husband. Yeah, yeah. Can I just close the tap a little bit so that you can see where you are? So it's 11 p.m. on a Saturday. You are in a gown and now you have to drive out of Joburg and look for this person because... Oh, my friend. It's 11 p.m. in, in, in Johannesburg. Um, you are in this white picket fence house. The garage is like full with, you know, the latest of the yeah. latest. But then in Dota Aiko. In Dota Aiko. The phone is not being answered. Huh? Phone maybe it did me like about 4 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> because now, you know, and it, it, you, you become now, you are panicking. You would say, um, yo, where is this man? Where is this man? Where is this man? Until you think that maybe he's dead. Maybe he's yes, he crushed. Yes, yes. It's a whole thing. So that's why right now, oh guys, you know, when I speak about my marriage, it's a whole thing that I, I, I that's why I said when my husband is ready, when my husband, because my husband is not a public person, mm -hmm. but he really hopes that one day he can share his side, his side yeah. and the journey, being a husband, being, having money, you not having money and all those things, having children, being a father, being a black man. We'll do that sometime. But yeah, it's a sport. But who ah, are guys now? Nah, Nang Poly Lane, my marriage is very nice. But why can't, why do you think it's not possible for black men to do it both? Buy you the Range Rover and the E Class Limited Edition and still come back home at 6 p.m.? They never had a, 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 a template. You know, you, you do things according to who you were, mm. like where you come from, you know? So now when they grow up, they never had the money. So once they have the money, my dad actually said on our sit down that. He was not dating until he was much older, until he was working, because he never had money. All he was thinking about was to make it. And then now when he was making it, then he got married. Now he wants to do those things, because now it's now that I have access. I want to be the boy mm -hmm. that I've always wanted to be, mm -hmm. but I never had access. And that's a conversation on its, on its own, own. On its own. That access is needed to do all these things. Black men, when they grow up, grow up, they don't have that. So now when they grow up, they start accumulating. And when they start accumulating, the first thing that they want to do, to do the things that they could not do. And some are married. So you ask yourself why a promise or a noloazi is forgiving a husband for cheating, as promised has said, mm -hmm. especially if it's an isolated incident that maybe he did when he was still super moneyed and yeah. his brain and was clouded. Yeah. But actually promise is forgiving that inner child yes. who couldn't do it because they were poor in their 20s. Now that they're in their 30s and they've accumulated, um, they didn't have a teaching. They didn't have a template from anyone. Mm, mm. But because now you're taking them through the journey of understanding, that's, that's, that's the performance you were actually doing at that time. Yeah. That's what you're forgiving. Yes. But you don't have, I want to say, you are no therapist. Sure. You don't have to forgive that. Sure. You don't have to take your, your husband through childhood traumas. You don't have to... But if you realize why a person does certain things, it helps you it to helps be able you. to put things into perspective. And if you want to stay, and, and you will the core of a person, you'll always know a core of a person. Mm -hmm. A person can cheat, but you know that this one is not a cheater, this one. But he cheated. Do you understand? So there are a lot of dynamics that you have to sit down and look at. But I am not here saying women must forgive their husband for cheating because of inner child. Uh -uh, you know therapist. If you don't want to do that, Mieke, he must go to therapy and heal his inner child. He must heal his, it's, like it's he his must, own work. Or even go to his mother to heal his inner child. Yeah, so no, yeah, I'm not here yeah. uh, saying women must do that. But for me, I go to therapy. I believe in therapy, even though I've not been going for a long time. But a lot of things, they make sense because I go to therapy myself. And I understand that as much as I come from a good family, I'm not the best person. And that's what you will have in your mind that, oh, because I come from marriage, I'm not. No. Therapy gives you perspective. It gives you perspective. And, and, and that perspective to people who don't have perspective makes you look stupid. It, oh, totally stupid. Like, ah, oh, promise is slim. Even now, I'll hear the comment on your, on your <laughs> podcast. Oh, this woman does not know her worth. No, my dear. They, I mean, there's peace inside me. That's why I can have this conversation. Yeah. Do you understand? I've yeah. got a lot of perspective about myself and about the next person. 
other people, you have your own traumas as a wife. And that's why you are reacting like this to many things that are happening in your marriage. But you know, don't want to address that, but you want to address your husband who is cheating and what, 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 you know? So there's a whole lot of things that we need to do. Have you been following the um, Will Smith, Jada Pinkett yeah, Smith yeah, yeah, saga? Yeah, yeah. So, I've, Not I've, closely, but I know what's going on. Uh, I've caught a bit of the book. I've yeah. watched some podcasts. And what I understood on her side of the story, because yeah. Will, Will obviously hasn't said anything, mm. is that to an extent she has been judged harshly. Mm. On both sides, there has been... Um, traces of lack of trust mm -hmm. on both sides there has been being with other people outside yeah. of the marriage yeah but her uh, her thing is that they have been separated for the past seven years mm. so for example we would see them together at award shows attending award shows together. together but they're not romantically together Okay. So she was saying, because of how much we've invested in the marriage, mm. we are a family first, more than we are husband and wife in that sense. Okay. So as much as we didn't want to go through the process of divorce, yeah. which we were close to at many times, mm -hmm. we, there was a point in our lives where we chose to live separate romantic lives. Mm -hmm. But for the kids, for having the family that we have and the yeah. family that makes sense to us and not to other yes. people. Yes. We've chosen to live in the manner that we live. Mm. Do you think that could be the future of marriages instead of people divorcing? Uh, well, because for me, marriage is not because of love. Once you get married, it's no longer. Especially for me, I believe marriage is for multiplication to bring the kids and to build a family and a nation and generation. That's the reason for marriage for me. Mm -hmm. Then now coming into the Jada, it just says that, that because now they're doing it for the kids. We have to come together when we have to go to the kids concert, Christmas together, all those things together. Yes. yes. If that's, I, I don't know, hey, if that works for them, especially their kids are older. So yeah. now you run uh, uh, the risk of where once you have a partner that you're about to get married, a separate partner that you're about to get married to, you need to understand that you won't do that, those things with Will anymore. You won't do those things with your kids anymore. Yeah. So I think that's that, especially at their age, they're old. I would do that as well. Most probably do that because they're old. Where am I still going? I don't want to get married anymore. Sure. But I still want to have like uh, my kids having a dad and a mom. And I think I would have that actually if I'm older. But, but if I'm still young and I divorce, mm -hmm. I'm definitely marrying again <laughs> I mean I believe in marriage <laughs> but if I'm older I... do, you, do, you, do, you, do you not think that these many marriage problems we have is because there's no more God in marriages nowadays mm, mm. There, there is lack of spirituality be yeah. it whether um, you believe in, in God or you believe in God through ancestry, mm. or you believe in a different type of God in a different type of religion. Yeah. But do you not believe that marriages are ending a lot because there's n that centering is not there? Hundred percent. I, I I truly believe that, and and a marriage is not for two people. Like I said, it's for a generation. You know, we come from people. Now we are releasing other people so that the generation continues, right? So. Now there is no longer the reason, the sense. Why are we married? Because Tina is, I love you, I love you. No, you're not getting married because you love this person. You're getting married because there are people that are vouching for you, your ancestors. Mm -hmm. There is a God that said they need to be multiplica multiplication through you guys. Yeah, yeah. So whatever difficulties that you have, whatever templates, if you have a Bible to read about what marriage is, how it's supposed to be, go back there and see. If it's about elders, go back and see. So I really truly believe that because marriage is a spiritual thing. That's one thing that we don't understand. That. And that's why when someone like Promise would say that if my husband would cheat, I wouldn't leave. You're just looking at her at a personal face value, a physical level. There are a lot of driving force. Spir marriage is a spiritual institution. So, did marriage make you lose a lot of friends? Not quite. Not quite lose a lot of friends, but I'm now like a bit. I, I check 
friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really check friends. Yes, I, I am friends with people that are not married. However, I'll, I'll have to vet your stance on marriage, you know. If I'm going to say that I can't, and now one thing about me, my family comes first. If I'll tell you that this, and you're like, ah, Chami, let's just go. You'll come back, uh, no, you can't be my friend. You need to understand that when I say that my kids, one, two, three, my husband, one, two, three, that's, that comes first between the friendship and the family. I hear you. I hear you. I so, hear you. yeah. No, it, I didn't really lose friends. It's just, yeah. Because family, at the essence, is the cornerstone mm. of humanity. Yeah. Economies are built by families. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And you would think that friendships are a problem in marriages, but you don't, you're not talking about nuclear family. Okay. It's difficult for you to actually leave your nuclear family to start your own family. I struggled with that. I come from a close knitted family. My sisters are my friends, you know. So that fact of saying, when my sister said, let's go, I was like, no, I can't go because my husband, that time, like my sister's older than me, it's so difficult. It's very difficult, but those boundaries need to be said that, you sure. know, guys, I love you, but you know my husband and children come first now. But they support me 100%. Promise, who do you pray to? I pray to God, Mudimo. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? I pray to God, Mudimo. I used to be a staunch Christian uh, until the church started going... Uh, pastors started sleeping with people, pastors started scamming and all those things. And I was like, is this Christianity really what worth it? What is a staunch it? Christian? Sorry. Staunch Christian is a... Is a Real, real Christian mm -hmm. that... <laughs> it's a real, real Christian. I used to go to church. Like, yeah. really. Staunch Christian for me is going to church every Sunday. Like, 90% of my life, I used to spend Revolver it in church. Revolver on church. Of which is not supposed... According to me, it's not supposed to be that way. You need to be able to appease your God or whatever that you believe in, if it's Muhammad or not Muhammad, if, it, if you are a Muslim and all that, you need to be doing all those things at everywhere that you are. Not that a Sunday, 7 o'clock, you have to go to church. Uh -uh. You are just holding people captive. That's what you're doing. There had to be that shift, though, that happened. What, what is that moment that triggered? Would, no, man, I, I don't think church is what I thought it is. So I'm a very spiritual person. Uh, when I was young, they thought I was going to be a Sangoma. A, I dream. Mm, you could be. Maybe. <laughs> it's the fashion. <laughs> <laughs> my God. And it's like, what's the like, podcast? Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to loot, whatever. I'm gonna I love feel. her so much. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We love Coco here. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, what was, so I dream a lot. Yeah. So I used to dream. But one thing that I want to point out is that I got my, I started being a spiritual person through Christianity. Mm. I will never, ever, ever come here and say Christianity, what, 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 no. And I want to go back there because of this, the, the prayer life that I've built when I was a Christian. So I started dreaming about the pastor, this pastor that went to Malawi. I used to go to one of the churches of that pastor. Bushiri. Ah, I don't know. I didn't say anybody. <laughs> so I used to go to those kind of churches of okay. one of a, uh, yeah. I shame, uh -uh. So that, that just really killed my spirit. And when I changed that church, I went to another church. Which was uh, similar. Yes. I didn't know it was similar. I started seeing the same things about the pastor. And I was like, Yo, uh -uh. give me a break. So you left the one who ran away and you went to the other one who raised people from the dead. <laughs> When now you don't know I was in church that day. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot even believe it. Okay, I actually went to that one, and then I went to this other one that is not known. Yeah. So those people, they killed my spirit, hey? They no, killed my spirit. No, where they Because the, those people with their fleshiness and um, the miracle works, yes. th there's a common thread of being a false prophet. There's just a common thread. And if you're a person, whether you are inside or outside, yeah. I feel bad for people who are still inside in such situations yeah. that are manipulative. Mm. But if you're a normal person who's outside who has a brain, You'll guys, see. you can see it. <laughs> and then, you know, you'll think that it's only those people because after the, the, the fleshy ones, I went to like a just the okay one. Yeah. That is not even know. That's what I'm saying. You don't know. But then they, those small ones, they aspire to be... Yes, there. they're trying to build themselves to that level. So, but then one thing I have to, 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 to speak to South African pastors is that they need to learn the word of God. Okay. Because those people, they know the word of God. Sure. They, if, you are set, if you are set in their teaching, you'll be fed by mm -hmm. the word of God. Even Absolutely. though they manipulated. Yes. I know the Bible 100% because of those people. 
I know the Bible. I know how to pray because of those people. Even though they, they take the very same gift that God gave them. Because I don't think they were just scammers. Mm -hmm. they, they have the gift. I agree. But then they use it to manipulate people. Absolutely. To scam people. Because you can't have so much favor over your life. You can't be able to tap into a spiritual realm that's so high. Yeah. If God hadn't purely given you given the gift. Given you. No, it, Satan then can... how you used the gift to manipulate people. 110 to... Those people were, were, were rose by God to be pastors. Those people, they know the word of God, guys. You cannot sit in their teaching and remain the same. I know God. I know Jesus because of those people. Sure. I've tried to go to South Africa because people are like, why are you so busy with this foreign what what? Go to just normal. I went, ah, uzo lalamos. Pastor Damini. Pastor... Ma I'm like, guys, we've got issues. We need you to actually give us hope, encourage yeah, us, you know, with yeah. the word of God. Those people, 100%, they know the word of God. Shall... Yeah. Ah, they know the word. But South African pastors, I think you need to learn. Ne? You need to, I don't know. You need to learn. L learn the word. You'd say it's a word Learn the thing. word. Pray. Those people, they pray. Yeah. Like, those people, they pray. They can stay in mountains for 40 nights. You think they're not joking. They're there praying. Sure. Can a South African pastor do that? No. We are so spoiled. Those people, they pray. That's why they can get into those realms and manipulate things. Um, we're reaching the end of our conversation. There's something I like to ask um, almost all of my guests. Yeah. Um, what's that one thing that you know for sure? Yeah. You're like, in life, this thing, I'm absolutely certain of, I know for sure. I'm sure about myself. If there's one thing I'm 100% sure, it's promise Magunyan. Or let me just say, it's this human, because identity is just what I was given here. I, I can bet with myself. So one thing I know for sure is myself. That wherever I am, however I am, I will always be myself. And what would you like to be remembered for in life as something that, as promised, I stood for this? Yeah. I stood for the truth. Yeah. I want people to know promise as somebody that was here and she spoke her truth unfiltered, I don't care what people are going to say, and I sleep better at night. So I want to be known for the truth. Whether you come here and comment, you do my thing, you stitch my thing and say, ah, she said this. No, that is my truth. After saying that, say, ah, Marauti is her truth. What, like, yeah. The show is Engineer Your Life, and I'm Lungelo KM. Her Can name I is Promise Makunyane. Um, she's absolutely amazing, as you've heard. If you've heard her from TikTok for the first time, and you finding a different side of her today. I hope you learned. Um, she's a person who stands for truth. She's a principled person. And she's able to touch the elements of life that you guys are scared of speaking about. And she's able to speak to you about her God in a manner that is very encouraging. And hopefully it encourages you too to seek your inner self and inner alignment. Promise, thank you so much thank you for, for coming. Where can we find you? Where can we find you? Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Guys, I've got a podcast here yeah. on YouTube. It's... Yeah. Mrs. Law, just type M R S L A W yeah. on my husband. This my husband that yeah. you'll find my podcast, and also I am on subscribe, guys. Watch my content. Absolutely, she's yeah. doing so well, guys. Thank you. She's doing so well. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. It's promise underscore makunyani. Yes. And thank you so much for having me. I can't me. wait for you to get a TV show. I can't wait um, for you to reach new grounds to... with YouTube. Take myself serious and fix my nails and do all this. But I don't care, hey? Ay, ay, ay. And I can't wait to watch this YouTube space of new media has for all of us. Um, a lot of people call it social media. Yeah. Some people call it alternative media. Mm. I believe it's new media. We're the revolution. We are new and we're here to stay. Game changers. Thank you so much. I'll see I you in the next the episode. <laughs>
Kalu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Kalu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.